welcome back. Uh, we're still looking into the limiting reagents in as far as reactions are concerned. So now we'll draw attention to typical examples. You know, I uh, would look at a scenario where two substances react with each other and uh, we may be given their you know, initial amounts and we need to decide which one of the two is in excess and which one uh, is actually uh, you know, a limiting reagent. Because we've also appreciated the fact that these uh, substances, they do not actually, uh, uh, they are not actually placed you know, in a reaction vessel you know, in exact amount. So at one stage or the other, the reaction will reach completion uh, or it will stop as a result of one of the two reactions being actually used up. Now let's look at a practical example, okay, involving, you know, limiting reagents. Now we are told here that we've got 192 grams of sulfur dioxide. So that's the mass of sulfur dioxide, uh, which reacts with 64 grams of oxygen, right? These are the two reactants. They form sulfur trioxide as a product uh, to the, uh, according to the following equation that's given to us. Which substance is the limiting reagent? So this is the actual uh, 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 question that we want to actually address. So let's go through the steps in terms of problem solving. What exactly do we need to do? First of all, because we know that uh, to quantify matter in a chemical reaction, we have to talk about the mole as the SI unit. So in other words, uh, it, it demands that we actually balance this equation of reaction. So as it is given, the reaction is not exactly balanced. So we'll try and, and apply the law of conservation of mass so that the reaction is balanced, so that we can derive the stoichiometric ratio in which these reactants uh, uh, participate uh, in the reaction. So there's one sulfur on the left and one on the right. The problem comes with the oxygen, okay? We've got four oxygen on the left and then three on the right. So for that reason, if we put a two here, okay, and we put a two there, okay, what does that mean for us? It says the sulfur is balanced, oxygen we've got six, which is the four plus two. Uh, there is the four and then the two, which gives us the six. So the stoichiometric ratio in which they react is two is to one is to two, right? So we've taken care of the first part. However, we need to put it out there that sometimes the equation may be given already in balanced form. So you don't have to go through this. So pay careful attention to that. If it says a balanced equation of reaction is given, you know that part is sorted. But if it says an equation, verify whether the equation is balanced or not so that we can arrive you know, at the stoichiometric ratio in which the substances participate in the chemical change. Right, okay. Now, step number two, we want to determine the moles of each substance, okay? Now, the number of moles of um, sulfur dioxide, okay, for argument's sake, is equal to mass of sample. The sample is 192 grams, okay, which is mass over molar mass. So the 192 is the mass of sample, okay? That's 90, 192 grams. Now, we go, if we go to our periodic table and try to get the molar mass of sulfur dioxide, we know sulfur is 32 and oxygen is 16. So what do we have here? We've got um, sulfur, which is 32, then 16 times two, another 32. So this is actually 64 grams per mole, okay? So if we do this calculation, it will give us the exact you know, uh, moles present in that 192 gram sample of sulfur trioxide. So if we go to our calculator, it will give us um, 192, okay, which is the mass of the sample, divided by 64, which is the molar mass. Uh, in this case, it gives, us, it gives us three moles, right? So that's three moles, okay? There are three moles in the 192 gram sample. But then what about oxygen, okay? number of moles of oxygen gas is equal to mass over molar mass. That's the formula, okay? So the mass of oxygen is 64, right, grams, divided by the molar mass of oxygen. So oxygen is actually a diatomic, you know, molecule. So it's each one of them is 16 multiplied by two. It gives us 32 grams per mole, okay? So the, num the moles of oxygen Okay, in this sample is actually two mole, right? So we've taken care of that, right? And then moving along, it says here, um, step number three, we want to use the stoichiometric ratio to determine which substance will react completely. So the balanced equation is two of sulfur dioxide 
and plus a mole of oxygen to give us two moles of the product, which is sulfur trioxide. So how many moles of each? We've got three moles in the sample, okay? We've got two moles in the sample. So if we ask ourselves if they react in the ratio one, uh, two is to one, okay? Now, for the entire two moles of the oxygen to react, we need, uh, uh, you know, uh, three, uh, we need to double the number of moles of sulfur dioxide, okay? So in other words, you only because of these uh, quantities that we have, wh what we're saying is that only one mole of oxygen will react, okay? Um, and then if one mole of oxygen reacts, it must react with double the number, which is two mole, okay? So the question is, if this is the stoichiometric ratio in which they react, which of the two substances actually is the limiting reagent? Which one will get used up earlier because of the quantities that we have? So what we're saying here is that if the whole three moles of, of sulfur dioxide react, it will need to react with half that number of moles, which is 1.5 mole, okay? So in other words, what we are saying, uh, the sulfur dioxide is actually our limiting reagent because the entire three mole of sulfur dioxide will react with 1.5. And then the unreacted amount of uh, 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 oxygen, which is in excess, ne, is actually uh, 0 0.5 moles, okay? So the 0 0.5 mole uh, is what remains because of the two moles present in the 64 gram sample, only 1.5 will react. It means the, all the three mole of the sulfur dioxide reacts, and then it means this is our reactant, which is the limiting reagent, and then oxygen is in excess, okay? Now, let's shift our attention to a different example that addresses more or less the same thing, okay? Which says here methanol, which is uh, CH3OH, that's the formula of methanol, is used as a common fuel and can be produced, you know, from a reaction between carbon uh, uh, monoxide and hydrogen. So we're given the mass of the carbon monoxide, which is 356 grams, as well as 65 grams of hydrogen gas, right? This is the equation of reaction. Now, we're also interested in uh, determining which substance is the limiting reagent. So if one is the limiting reagent, it certainly means the other one is the one that is in excess, okay? Now, first things first, if we go through the very same steps that we did in the previous example, we'd want to also check if indeed the equation of reaction is balanced or not, right? So the ratio, of, I mean, the, 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 the carbon on the left, it's one, on the right, it's one, okay? Oxygen, it's one, it's one. Hydrogen, we've got um, four, okay, on the right, so it means we need to put a two. So what does that tell us about the stoichiometric ratio? It tells us that there is a ratio of one is to two is to one. Okay, this is the stoichiometric ratio in which these substances react with each other, right? So first things first, um, we want to uh, determine the number of the moles of each substance present in terms of the reactants, right? So the moles of carbon monoxide is equal to mass of sample divided by the molar mass, okay? So the mass of the sample is 356 grams. So we're asking ourselves in 350 grams of the monoxide, uh, how many moles are present, okay? So it's gonna be 356 divided by the molar mass of carbon monoxide, which is 12 plus 16, that gives us um, 28, okay, grams per mole. So that's grams, then that's 28 grams per mole, right? So that uh, calculation will give us the, the moles of carbon monoxide, okay? So it's 356 divided by 28, okay? What do we get? We get that as a decimal fraction, 12.71. So that's 12.71 moles, okay? 12.71 mole, right. And then what about the mole present in 65 grams of hydrogen, okay? So the mass of sample over the molar mass, right? So this sample has a mass of 65 grams, okay? So it's 65 grams 
divided by the moles of, of the, the molar mass of hydrogen gas, which is two grams per mole. So that is from the periodic table, okay? So if we, we, we go to our calculator, just to uh, get that value of the moles, we get uh, 65 divided by uh, two, okay? That gives us, um, as a decimal fraction, 32 and a half, okay? So that's 32.5 mole, right? Now, this is what it is. Uh, so from the balanced equation, one is to two is to one, right? So we're asking ourselves, um, if this is, these are the moles of, uh, if we can rewrite that, so we've got carbon monoxide, how many moles are of there? 12.7 mole, okay? So we're comparing the moles there, plus two uh, hydrogen, which uh, gave us 32 and a half mole, okay? This gives us CH3OH, right? Um, that's the product. Now, the ratio is one is to two, okay? This is the stoichiometric ratio in which they react with each other. So for every mole of carbon monoxide, we need double the moles of hydrogen gas. So if we've got 12.7, the entire 12.7 will react, of, of, or 12.7 mole of, of carbon monoxide will react with double that, which is two times 12.7. Right, okay. So as a result, all the carbon monoxide will actually be, uh, 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 you know, used up in the reaction, and then it becomes our limiting reagent. Now, how many moles of hydrogen will remain unreacted? Okay, that's the next question, right? So what is uh, the, the mass of methanol that is produced? Maybe we want to start there. So if uh, 12 point, if we go back, we're saying 12.7, um, moles uh, of carbon monoxide produces the same number of moles of, 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 meth of methanol. So this is what it says in terms of those two, okay? So we have 12.7 uh, 12 mole, okay, of, of uh, uh, carbon monoxide, right, uh, produces, okay, 12.7 mole of methanol, which is CH3OH, right? Okay, so that's the stoichiometric ratio because one is to one from the balanced equation of reaction. Okay, so we ask ourselves, in 12.7 moles of methanol, what is the mass of methanol? We know that number of moles of CH3OH is equal to the mass that will be obtained over the molar mass of methanol, right? So the, 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 the moles of methanol is 12.7, okay? Is equal to the mass that we want to find, and then we can go to our periodic table and get the molar mass of methanol, which is 12 plus 16, which is um, uh, 28 plus four, which is 32, okay? So that's 32 grams per mole. So that's um, 32, okay? So if we, uh, isolate the mass, we'll get a mass of, uh, if we can quickly verify that, 32 multiplied by 12.7, okay? So if we go to our calculator, we get 32 multiplied by 12.7, okay? Um, we get um, that value uh, as a decimal fraction. So the mass that will be formed is 406,4, right? So that's 406,4 grams of methanol that will be produced, right? Okay, and then the last part uh, demands us uh, what mass of the reactant is in excess. We need to go back. We know that um, two, two multiplied by 12.7 uh, moles, okay, of, uh, uh, um, of hydrogen, okay, gas, uh, reacted, okay? Right, but at the end of the day, we also need to ask ourselves, how many moles of hydrogen did we have? The moles of hydrogen that we have is 32,5 in the sample, okay? So it is 32,5, so we have got unreacted, okay? Okay, is equals to 
32,5, okay, moles minus 2 times 12.7, okay? This comes from this micrometric ratio. So if we quickly verify that, uh, we'll have uh, something like 32,5 minus 2 times 12.7, okay? These are the actual moles that uh, we did not react. So we had 7.1 moles, okay? 7.1 mole of hydrogen, okay? So the mass um, is equal to mole um, over molar mass. We go back to that equation. So 7.1 is equal to the mass that we're looking for. Hydrogen is a mass of two. So the unreacted mass of uh, uh, the reagent, which is in excess, which is hydrogen in this case, is 2.71, which is 14, comma, two grams. So that's the whole idea in as far as the calculations are concerned. Right, hopefully uh, this makes a lot of sense in as far as, you know, uh, problems involving the limiting reagents, the reagents in excess. You need to do as much practice as you possibly can. All the best with that.